rebuilding a vintage open steam launch, part 40, making the boiler mounts, fitting the radio compartment, and it's nearly there. Not much to do now to finish the job. In the last episode, I said that that was the penultimate episode. This one is not going to be the last one, though. I will be doing one more where I show the boat in steam on the bench. But for the moment, I'm doing a little bit of painting. This is the support frame for the radio control, and I'm painting it before I glue it into position. It is very important on a model boat to not have any bare wood showing, particularly mahogany, which tends to soak up water like a sponge. This painting clip is of course speeded up. The only part of this frame that I'm leaving unpainted is the top part, because that just gets epoxied underneath the decking. Moving on now, this is the part of the video which shows how I mount the boiler in the boat. The mounting base for the boiler is integral with the burner. And what I need to do is put four 4BA bolts in around the side of the boiler. But when I took the boiler out of this boat, that was a real pain. So I'm going to do it in a different way and make it a quick release system. What I'm going to do is make four knurled bolts. Now normally, you would make the bolt in one piece, but I don't want to do that. This is a very simple way of doing it, and it's fairly quick, and it's just some food for thought. What I would normally do is put a piece of metal in the chuck, turn it and thread it and part it off after I'd knurled it. Now this is knurling, K-N-U-R-L-I-N-G, and it's really good. It makes a mark on the metal that allows you to grip it with your fingers. And it's also good for a friction roller. But in this case, all I'm going to do is make some little knurled buttons, which are going to be threaded 4BA down the middle, and then countersunk to take a brass 4BA countersunk bolt. Doing it this way is a bit of a cheat really, it's not proper engineering, but I've never been an engineer, I keep saying to people, I'm not an engineer, I'm a musician. The idea of doing this is that if ever one of the bolts gets damaged, all I have to do is warm up the part and unscrew it, and put another one in with some more Loctite. So for those of you who are observant, you will notice that I started off the job in my larger lathe and now I've moved on to the smaller one. For the simple reason, I just like to keep moving around the workshop because it's very cold in there at the moment. I'm drilling a hole down the end of the piece of steel. This is a one eighth of an inch in diameter and it's going to wander all over the place at this length. But this is not a precision item, so please all the meticulous people who tell me I do things wrong all the time, just leave it out, will you? This is for beginners, not for experienced engineers. It occurs to me, and I know quite a few of these people, who use model engineering as the hobby itself. Making things using a lathe and a milling machine with great precision is the hobby. For me, it's not really. I can be as precise as I need to be relative to the job that I'm doing, and this does not need to be precise. This is just one of many ways of doing this, and a better way would be to do it all in one go without removing any of the parts from the chuck, just part off the pieces. The reason that I'm doing it this way is I just think it makes a slightly more interesting video for the beginners. My videos are generally aimed at beginners to the hobby. I can remember when I was a beginner and getting information like this was really difficult. So I thought to myself one day, I know I'll put something back and that's why I do it. Yes, I know I do get a little bit of revenue from the adverts that YouTube put on the channel, but I'm not going to be able to order my Ferrari anytime soon from what I get from that. And some of the comments I get from time to time really are stupid. I mean, stupidity turned into an art form. But what do I know about lathe work? I've only been doing this sort of thing for about 45 years. Anyway, on with the job. Here, I'm just cleaning the threads up on the buttons because countersinking them just burred over the end of the thread. And now I'm going to use some Loctite 603 on the end of the thread and simply screw one of these countersunk brass bolts into position. Once the Loctite has cured, this countersunk bolt is going nowhere. It's going to become an integral part of the boiler fastening. But of course, if I want to remove the bolt, say it broke or wore out, then I just heat up the part and undo it because heat will destroy the bond of the Loctite. But in reality, I cannot see any need to ever want to remove these brass bolts from the buttons. And here we have the four completed boiler fastenings.
As I mentioned earlier, removing the existing 4BA bolts that held the boiler onto the base was really difficult. There's not much room in here. In no time at all, the boiler is mounted into the boat. And if ever the boiler needs to be removed from the boat, it's a very simple job. I'd like to quickly mention that one of the servos needs an extension lead, and it's no good having this connector dangling about in the bottom of the boat. I need to fully waterproof and protect this cable from the heat in the boat. I'll show how I do that in the next episode. At this stage I've also fitted the centre section of the superstructure around the boiler, and it fits very well. I think it can probably stay in there. And the main reason for fitting the superstructure in the centre at this stage is so I know where to put the mounting for the radio control system. And it's going to go here, just in front of the centre section. So the next job is to mix some epoxy resin. I've covered this many times so I'm not going to labour the point and I've speeded it up. Make sure you have equal amounts of both the epoxy resin and the hardener and mix the two together thoroughly before use. And here I'm spreading the epoxy resin liberally on the part. And I hold the part into the boat with a couple of scrap pieces of mahogany until the epoxy resin is fully cured. Once the epoxy resin has set, I can remove the two pieces of wood that were holding the component against the side of the hull, and now it sits there all by itself. The next job is to paint it all. And once this second coat of paint has dried, it's time to do a test fit of the superstructure. And it seems to fit very well. It would be really bad if it didn't. A few episodes ago, I made some new stanchions for the seating, and it's time to varnish these, because they're very light in colour, but once they're varnished, they sit in very well with the existing ones. Once the seating units are complete again with the new stanchions, they just need sticking into the superstructure. For this I'll probably use some cyanoacrylate adhesive, just a spot or two should hold them in place. In my opinion, it's detailing like this that makes model boats look really good. But I do feel that there are limits to the detailing in a model boat. If you put too much in, it becomes a little bit like a floating doll's house. This is looking still a bit naked without the seating in, but you get the idea of what it's going to look like now. I do like this boat, I wish it was mine, but unfortunately it's not. It's not perfect by a long way, but it's such a great looking boat. When I finally get the seating in place, I think I'm going to sit my action man in the back. It's only in recent years that I've ever bought an action man, and I bought the one that I have off eBay, and I sit him in boats now and again. When I was young we were quite poor, and all I had was an action man deserter. But that's enough of that, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.